happy Tuesday. Hello, everybody. Araya Anra coming to you live here, and we are continuing to talk about the heart. We started uh, last week. I shared a little bit um, with the Magenta Dragon. I worked with her on Monday, the day before the live, and um, felt some new heart, more heart movement. We always have more to do in the heart space. And Ileana, the Magenta Dragon, um, is really about activating our high heart, which is part of our, it's one of the dragon chakras, it's part of how we move into alignment and merge with our light body self. And I had an interesting piece of information come through from the dragons this morning in session with someone. And <clears throat> one of these things that we move into as we awaken or as we step into who we be and we are <clears throat> coming into what people call awakening right? And a lot of times these concepts of awakening are bandied about or thrown around and people feel like, well, you know, I'm awakening. I'm supposed to be creative. Isn't that, you know, when we awaken to ourselves and we're supposed to know who we are and what we want to be doing, what our desires are, and our own creative flair starts to come because we are really living in who we be. But I don't feel like I'm doing anything. I'm not creative. I'm not an artist. I'm not, uh, you know, a sculptor. I'm not a writer <clears throat> because in our world there's a definition of creativity that is about production that is about these things that you know like the the deck so here I've had this beautiful magenta sitting with the oracle deck so we've got all the cards and she's sitting on the top there well this is a creative outlet of something that rose within me from the dragons that is a creative production and there are lots of those in the world and most artistic, whether they're movies, um, books, um, paintings on the wall, these beautiful renderings of the dragons by um, <clears throat> Nicolas Pena, my artist from Argentina. I always like to give him a plug, he's amazing. And <clears throat> those are our creative endeavors that everybody recognizes. That's what we expect creativity to be, an outward production of something. And so it was really interesting and what I really felt heart driven to share today was we are in <clears throat> our awakening process. We're coming into who we be. And I think I've shared in the last couple of weeks of my, my dragon hearts went into a meditation of actually going through a hallway and opening the doors of their heart to find out like what brings you joy? Because a lot of us get to like, I'm coming into myself, but I don't even remember what brings me joy. I don't know what brings me joy. And there's so many things beyond like physical activity that bring us joy that <clears throat> like we got to tap into it. We got to really like connect and go, well, what does bring me joy? And so in this session this morning, it was beautiful because the dragons were saying, well, let's look at creativity. Then you're feeling not creative. You're feeling like you're not doing anything, even though you're awakening and, and starting to know who you are. Well, <clears throat> What's creativity? And I'm going to read this verbatim because it was so beautiful the way they expressed it. <clears throat> creativity is a movement of energy from the heart space that wants to give. That's what creativity is. I'm going to repeat it because it's really a profound way of looking at what is creativity. Creativity is a movement of energy from the heart space that wants to give. If you realize that, no, you're not an artist, maybe you're not a chef, maybe you're not a, a writer, maybe you're not a dancer, maybe you're not a um, choreographer or a architect or, you know, things that are creative in the world space with product or something that's physical that can be seen and created. If you are a heart-centered person and something's going to come out from your energy space that you want to give... It might be an ability to <clears throat> be inspired to do something kind for someone. That's a creative act. You're creating a kindness for someone that that might be your special gift that you know how to get a heart knowing and read of, wow, what do they really need? And how do you move into what that is? Well, as your heart opens, you're going to get more and more clear on that. What inspires my heart and what does my heart want to give and it's the giving of that creation it could be making cookies is that creative 
maybe it's not a brand new recipe. I might always look at, well, creativity means I'm, I'm creating the recipe. I've got to make it from, you know, like nothing. I've got to come up with something new. Well, no, you are sharing energy from your heart. It's that energy movement wants to give. So if I create a plate of cookies that's from me, imbued with heart, love in that, and want to share it with someone, or maybe I want to um, see what they need and go deeper into uh, the beautiful example that came up in this session was your creativity might be recognizing that there's an elderly person that needs a ramp down the stairs in their home because you notice that they're having trouble maneuvering around their house easily. And your own creative process would be to vision and visualize, whoa, what could make that easier? What could facilitate and ease that process? And so you build a ramp. Well, that's a creative thing in the world, but, or you have someone else build it. But your creative gift is actually making their way to move around easier. What does that actually do? Because the gift isn't really about what's there. The creativity isn't about what's there. It's about what is happening on their deeper level of, because of that, they have a different emotional response in the world because they're feeling burdened or they're feeling like they're burdening their family asking for help to get around because they have stairs in their house. And you come up with seeing a need and realizing, hey, we could do this. That's a thoughtful, creative process. So we have to change the definition of creativity. We have to change our expectation of ourselves in when I come into knowing of who I am, my gifts are not going to look like anybody else's in the world. Your gifts are not going to look like anybody else's in the world. And what you have to give, here Robin's saying, the energetic flow of their movement to get around, absolutely. Giving them flow, giving them um, independence again when, especially an elderly person, they've been independent their whole life and they're all of a sudden feeling like they're burdening everybody and they're frustrated because their body doesn't work the same way and they feel young in their head and they're like going through a lot of emotions with aging, with getting, and then the added emotion of feeling like they're burdening and asking for help. And a very simple, wow, that's creative in giving them something from your heart. So moving into this change of definitions, as we step into who we know, and this is, you know, why am I talking about this with the dragons? Well, the dragons is who I was working with inspired with this and uh, Eliana, my magenta dragon, is just like, it was all about opening the high heart. And the more we come into that high heart, the more creative we do become. We have this new level of uh, direct connection with self. And you might find, even if you are an artist or a dancer, that kind of creator in the world, that everything you want to create shifts as you're really open to who you be and it becomes more amplified or takes a different direction because it's led from you in a different way. Now, luckily, most artists are actually already pretty tuned into their heart unless they're um, doing what's expected from external demand. A lot of artists and creators like to create based on demand, which is the movie industry. But then there's those that are just inspired and they they come up with a concept and that's that they're already connected on that soul level. They already have that deep heart knowing of who they be and what really inspires them. And they were brought through to actually be living that. Not all of us have that, but all of us are on this journey of knowing and coming into merge with self. And as we do that, the dragons want to encourage you when you have definitions of what you have an expectation of awakening means, well, Awakening does bring you into more creativity. What does creativity really mean to you? So take that in. What other definitions come up? What do you recognize or expect as part of your awakening process to start happening? Well, we've talked about a little bit your desires. What a, what is my heart desires? So here there's um, Robin Sharon again. I had a similar message yesterday about creative flow comes from the heart. Absolutely. I'm having a lot of heart expansion here in the last week and I feel like that's where we're working right now which is really beautiful. I've got both Rihanna the Silver Dragon which is the fifth dimensional Orion uh, Heartline um, love lineage and then the um, 
much higher octave going up into the Pleiades. So whew, change our definitions. <coughs> what is a desire? Well, most people think of desire as something I want, something I'm craving. Desire, a lot of people might look at it as like something sexual or intimate. That can be. I desire. <laughs> but the heart's desires, when we start stepping into really what brings you joy, what is your heart desire, most of us don't know what those are because the definition has been wrong. So we need to redefine what is a desire. A desire is that that which will fulfill that uprising of energy from the heart that wants to give. It's that I'm giving myself joy. The desire is to give myself joy by maybe giving someone else joy or by doing something kind or by, for me, teaching. For me, being out in nature. My heart's joy is to be out and connect like when I'm with my bees. I can sit there all day long. So what we come into the realization of is we're moving forward into a new plane of reality, right? We are moving forward into a new experience of merging with our light body, actually walking with the mantle of our light body as we move around this plane of existence. We're no longer going to be wrapped in the third dimensional. We're going to actually be able to see it clearly what it is. No, we're not part of it. We're not interacting. We might interface with it. We might um, engage here and there where needed, but we're starting to draw into a really different perspective and this new level of reality, which is our fifth dimensional new earth quantum field paradigm, whatever you want to call it, is the place where we start living that energy flowing through the heart. Everything's going to change. So of course, as that changes, our definition is going to change. All of our definitions are going to change. And so are we consciously aware enough to be recognizing when a term comes in of what I'm doing in that new world or being shown, like, check, check in on your heart desires. Well, what's my new definition of that? What, what is the greater definition? And this I've been talking about with, uh, in other circles, in, in my um, <laughs> program circles, with seeing beyond how you've seen something before, experiencing something in a, in a way that allows the structure that's been there to speak to you in a different way. It's literally letting the energy body flow through it, whether it's um, a chair, a tree, a piece of food, um, a project, by looking at and feeling and connecting energetically with whatever that is, it lets it blossom and flow in a different way. And that's actually where we're gonna start seeing, interpreting and living our reality differently. When we can actually feel the entire energy body of the tree communicating with us or just directly present instead of just seeing the tree. That's 3D. We see the tree. There it is. But when we see the energetic dynamic of the tree and feel it and actually open that communication line, that's the new reality. This is where we start taking it those steps forward into expansion. And we don't just do it with things that we know are conscious living beings. Everything that has a 3D structure is in physical reality, has an underlying fifth dimensional geometric energy body. It has a geometric structure that's its energy form. That's its 5D. Let it reveal to you. Let it show you what it is. This is redefining our reality. So here this whole talk on creativity, creativity is moving into this is how we redefine our reality. And looking at that, that's actually a creative process. That's something rising in my heart that says, we want to create this new reality. This is something, this is a movement of energy from your heart that wants to give because it's giving into this new communal harmonic of the new earth. And whew, that gives back to me. Everything we give always comes back, but it's like a direct <laughs> circle. As I give out to that reality, it's giving directly back to me and I'm amplifying my energy field and amplifying the energy field of that because it's being seen, recognized, felt, for the first time in eons, just like the dragons, that's what we're doing when we wake up the dragons. When you see them in the clouds, when you see them in the trees, when you see them in the water, when you see them in the mountains, they've not been seen for eons. Even the fact that you recognize and engage and see them 
that's changing the world. My whole body's tingling in this. That's changing the world. That's a creative act of giving from the heart to wake that dragon up because they're ready to come into and be seen by us in that higher dimensional reality. Woo! Super exciting, right? So feeling that beauty, feeling that creativity and knowing, check in with yourself. Bring a conscious process in. Where can you redefine these terms that are showing up as part of your new reality? Because if you know, if your guides are saying, move into your creativity or move into your heart space or, or move into um, giving, move in whatever it is. Okay, well, how do I define giving? In the past, maybe in 3D, giving was I give funds to a homeless person, I give presents to people that need it, I give um, time as a volunteer. There's ways of giving. And as we expand into the new reality, what does giving mean? Is it giving a deeper level of yourself as you connect energetically with that gift you're sharing that might be a physical gift? I'm giving that plate of cookies, but there's so much more that I'm giving with this that goes in. Yay, Nuri, <laughs> catching alive. There's so much more in the new reality of recognizing and feeling the energetic giving that is going on from your heart chakra as that's engaged. That's giving a bigger level of energy into the whole interchange that that person that maybe isn't awake yet or that you're bringing coffee or, or cookies or, or a service to, they're going to feel that from you and they're going to go, whoa, there's so much energy in this or this feel this is the best cookie I've ever had or this is the best volunteer help I've ever had or whatever like what's different and it's that level of giving that higher level of energy communion that is behind giving in the new reality and I love that we've gotten a couple new definitions here so keep going on your own let these sort of inspire and go you know maybe here's a new term or here's a term that I'm being told by my guides that's coming in how would I redefine that in the new reality? Let the heart speak and show you, like, what's the greater level of that? It's the same concept. Let the greater energy flow, that feminine field that comes up and out, that creates with the creative force of the universe, come up and through the structure that we've always known as 3D. Whether it's coming up and through an item, whether it's coming up and through you, whether it's coming up and through a group, something bigger, micro, macro, Take it bigger, and it's that same principle force, the dynamic of the divine feminine fully coming online, coming up and through, letting her energy body be seen, letting her force field be seen and felt, because she's back. <laughs> so I challenge you this week, find one new definition of a term that you've always looked at with 3D eyes and heart, and moving into your high heart and your 5D perspective, how can it be redefined? And I'm just going to read this one again about creativity because I found it to be such a profound way of looking at it. Creativity is a movement of energy from the heart that wants to give. <laughs> Walk away with that. <laughs> so with that, if that inspires and you're feeling, I can feel all this transference from my heart because uh, Ileana has been working on me leading from the heart so much deeper, so much bigger in every aspect of my life. And that's the piece that honestly I find really funny has been my hardest part, which I'm a water dragon. It's like the last frontier and yet it's, it should be my norm. It should be my wheelhouse for the water dragons. And I think I challenged myself with lots of heart challenge in many, many lifetimes because of that. And this is a playful one I want to share. This is very funny because I had a realization yesterday. The, the idea of play came in. <clears throat> so go ahead. I challenge you. Redefine play. <coughs> so I was talking in a session with someone yesterday, and there was this idea of what what brings you joy? What what motion or movement or something aligns you to joy. And I had a coach years back who at the end of my session said, you need to go to the playground and swing on the swings. And it was a soul based business coaching thing. And I was like, what? <laughs> I gotta go play. On the, I gotta go swing on the swings. Okay. 
So I did it. I followed through because I trusted her. And I realized that swinging does bring me a lot of joy. It takes us back into that childhood memory of freedom and just being with your friends and being on the playground. And that, for me, when I tapped into it yesterday and I've always connected with the motion that is this, this freedom, this soaring, this flying. And it hit me square in the face, the part that I'd never seen before. And I, I realized like, wow, I've even taken this memory and this energy of play up a notch in my perspective of it because I realized that motion naturally brings me joy. Why? Because I'm a water dragon. This is what water does. Swings made me feel naturally at home, just like the water does. So the swings were always my favorite thing on the playground. Boom, it hit me square in the face because I've, I've known about the swing piece. Isn't that funny? Yes, I see some laughing. <laughs> Whoa, finally made that connection. We get the bigger pieces. I've had the swing piece for a couple years now. Never connected the motion with higher level water self. So this is how we expand it. We let it keep growing up into higher and higher octaves of realization, knowing, connection to self, aha moments. And I love that. So life get, let's, uh, getting into the giggle zone. Exactly, Nuri, that giggle therapy. So if that makes you giggle, then I was so obtuse that I couldn't see why I loved swings. Uh, take it and just laugh at me all you want. I love that. Um, if you need some insight, inspiration, you know you need a session or just a 20-minute discovery call to say, gosh, I want to connect to my next step. Reach out on my booking calendar, the book now button on the homepage of dragonwithin.com or invokehealing.com. We'll get you connected. And if you are knowing like there's something opening in your heart and you are being drawn and called into deeper level of work with the dragons, I want to make sure you know that the quantum flight program finally got calendared. Lionsgate happened the next morning. I woke up and the dragons were like, okay, let's go time. Put it on the calendar. So we start October 11th. I'm taking applications now. I'm in the process this week. I've started the first interview calls. So we have the first um, dragons in the sphere. Super excited about that. It's anchored and it's going to just keep having everybody get pulled into it. That's supposed to be part of it. So if you feel that heart pulse call, dive in with the application. And um, I'm I'm starting the interview calls. So we are, we are on board. We're fired up and flying. Quantum flight is about... <sighs> We are just taking massive leaps forward to soar off of that final cliff and expansion into who you be. That gets me super excited. So sending a huge heart hug from my deepest dragon self out to everybody there. Uh, someday some of you will get them in person. The whole dragon hug, hug thing that I do on all of my emails um, came from my first experience of leading a group as dragon in Egypt um, and I found myself hugging people as I met them and breathing like a dragon and they felt this massive shift happen as my dragon would step in and they'd feel me breathing in their ear like you're hugging right and this <sighs> dragon hug comes through and their whole body would tingle and they're like wow I've never had a dragon hug before <laughs> So that's what it's about when I say sending dragon hugs. Someday you'll get one in the physical when uh, there's workshops or activations again around the world. And I am sending you that to wish you a beautiful week. Much love to my dragon family. Love you guys. Did you notice? I don't know for you. Volume is up. Microphone is in. Background is quiet. Wi-Fi signal is strong as ever. <laughs> Thank you, universe. I finally got them to give me a new router and a new modem. And he acknowledged that we had a mystery going on in this where it drops from 432 to like 80, 50 feet away <laughs> all over the house. He's like, oh, thank you. Hallelujah. We've got, we've got some progress here. All right. Much love to everybody. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.